Ernest Timmons, a United States Air Force technical sergeant, was 33 at the time of his appearance on To Catch a When he was caught speaking with Michelle, a decoy pretended to be a 13-year-old girl. Many now know him as the sweaty p as you'll see why he's called that later when he starts sweating buckets. When being confronted by Chris Hansen, as the sting progressed, he got more and more nervous, to the point where it's comical how much sweat has left his body by the time the interview is over. When Ernest turned 18 in 1992, he enlisted in the U.S. Air Force. While this alone might be commendable, he ended any chance of a successful career instantly the moment he walked through the door of what he thought was a 13-year-old girl many years after his enlistment. But before we continue, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe with notifications on to support us and update on the current whereabouts of other people featured on the Ketchup Now, back to the video. At the time of the sting, Ernest Timmons, 33 years old, used the nickname Jokater34 to communicate with the decoy. Even though he's 33, he lied about his age and said he was 30. Not like that makes much of a difference. Here are some of the things he said to what he believed was a 13-year-old turning 14, as you're about to see his intentions are stomach-turning. Ernest, at Jokater34, asked the girl, How do I know I won't get in trouble? I mean, you are a m***er. The decoy as girl 1993 replied, How would you? Ernest then replied, Are you playing me? When I get there, a cop is waiting. The decoy said, Don't tell anyone. Why would I have a cop there? Ernest then said, Duh, I am talking to about effing. The decoy then said, Duh, you're talking to a minor, not a cop. If that wasn't bad enough, Ernest continued on and asked for something from the decoy, which was even more disgusting than the prior chat he was having with her. Do you have a picture of your as I could see? Please? I don't have my camera. You could bring one. <laughs> to do what? I don't know. <laughs> as he wrapped up the conversation, Ernest decided to drive to the Sting house, and he literally brought a camera with him to do exactly what the decoy had asked of him. Additionally, it took Ernest less than 24 hours to show up to the Sting House. Glad you can make it. Just as promised, Ernest had brought a camera. This, in our opinion, makes Ernest one of the most dangerous featured on To Catch a While he did not technically introduce the idea of bringing a camera to the meetup, a court would likely come to the conclusion that Ernest certainly had intentions to use the camera to take advantage of who he thought was a child. Additionally, it's worth mentioning the quality of the camera Ernest brought to the Sting. It's important to keep in mind the Sting took place in the mid-2000s, where a camera like the one he had bought would be considered pretty high-end. It's our opinion that this was not the first time Ernest had done this based on this fact. Prior to entering the house, you could see that Ernest actually hesitated going into the Sting house. Looking back at this, you are watching the last bit of Ernest's conscious leave his body as he enters the Sting house. Come sit down. I made some brownies. You want some? Oh, no. no. Are you sure? Yeah, can we just go upstairs for a little bit? Oh, let's just hang in here for a little bit. Why don't you sit down? Okay, well, I, I just need to get going down. here a It'll little be bit. Fine. Yeah. According to Casey, the decoy at the time, he seemed as if he doesn't want to waste any time and he was either going to do something really quick or just take off. Well, weren't you going to bring me lotion or anything? Oh, no, I don't have any. Oh, because I thought you were going to teach me some stuff, that's all. As the sting progresses, it seems like Ernest got a hint of what was going on as if he has a clue of something bad is about to happen. The way he stood up from the chair and actually motioned as if he was going to leave the house was likely him picking up on the fact that he was getting set up. Luckily, it was already too late for him. Actually, everything is just fine, but I need you to have a seat right there for me. Yes, sir. Put the camera down. Just have a seat, please. After Chris Hansen comes in to confront Timmons, you could tell by the look and demeanor that he is frightened and intimidated. This is another huge indicator that Timmons knew exactly what he was doing was extremely wrong and could ruin his entire life twice over. Let's go over to Ernest's explanation. He claimed that his friend Kevin from the Air Force base told him to bring a camera to the residence. Ernest also argued he didn't know the last name and that they met on base after Chris inquired about it. Let's, for the sake of the argument, even entertain the idea that this was all some huge misunderstanding. There are multiple flaws in his entire argument. Why would he of his own free will go to somebody's house with a camera because a friend you just met told you to if he didn't understand why he was even there? Not only does that make no sense at all, it's unjustifiable. There's also the additional fact that he didn't even know the last name of his friend, Kevin. Keep in mind, Timmons is enlisted in the U.S. Air Force. It's very likely most members are on a last name basis. This makes it very odd for him to not know the last name of this Kevin, if he even exists at all. Even if he thought it was a joke, Ernest is clearly visibly nervous way earlier than when Chris Hansen even confronts him. After Hansen pokes several holes in this explanation, Ernest then exclaims that he was stunned that Chris was not accept his justification. During the confrontation, Ernest revealed he was also a father with a seven-year-old child and showed a picture of his wife to Chris on the camera he brought with him on the site. 
This is likely an attempt to try and garner sympathy from Hansen, and possibly try to relate to him, thinking he's either a cop or the girl's father. At this point in the confrontation, he tries to leverage his own wife and child to try to justify the fact he is at a 13-year-old's house with a camera in order to escape punishment. As the confrontation wraps up, Chris brings up the fact that Ernest was concerned about TV shows similar to To Catch a P from earlier in his chat logs with the decoy. And then we are blessed with this legendary piece of television. You seem concerned about seeing those TV shows of people getting caught. Have you watched those shows? No, sir. Because you're about to be on one. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on adults who try to meet kids online. <laughs> for sex. Oh, please, sir. This is also where the infamous picture of Ernest is taken, where he is seen visibly sweating, mouth open dumbfounded that he was about to have his life ruined. Arms behind your back. Relax, relax. When Ernest left the house, the officers escorted him to the ground. He put aside his camera and cried like a baby. He was formally charged with attempted and attempted luring of a His bail was then set for $50,000 after he was called before a judge. In our opinion, the only thing we feel the judge was lacking on would be a charge related to his camera that he most certainly had sinister intentions for. This unfortunately was a pattern for the New Jersey Sting, since most of the alleged received very light sentences. Now, let's talk about what happened since Ernest's appearance on To Catch a P***. Shortly after the arrest, Ernest's wife filed for divorce, and he was set to be dishonorably discharged from the Air Force. However, there is a little more to the story that most haven't covered. Many online have speculated the reason Ernest never made bail. In a situation like this, the military assumes jurisdiction after the civil justice system concludes its proceedings. Even if Timmons pleaded guilty and was subsequently released with time already served, he would still remain an enlisted member of the U.S. Air Force. The military authorities would collect him from the county jail after he made bail and transport him back to the base, confine him to the barracks, and subject him to additional duties for approximately one to two months. During this time, the military would process the necessary paperwork to demote him to the rank of E-1 private, discharge him, and strip him of all benefits, including the ones his family had. Throughout the entire process, Timmons would have to face the presence of his fellow unit members, including those who he used to work with. The shame associated with these consequences was probably too much for Ernest, knowing that all his buddies on the base would know about the things he tried to do to a child. However, Ernest actually passed away due to liver failure on September 7, 2007, in a community medical center while under a watchful eye of Ocean County Police, before he could make bail at all. He remained in police detention for six months after his arrest, pending dishonorable discharge. Rumors have been circulating online that he purposefully discontinued his liver medication in order to let his family still claim his benefits.